CBS 47 Action News Jax starts right now. A driver flipped this truck in an area where children play and then took off. One dad who lives nearby showed us the parts collected from this crash and others like it in this local neighborhood. And breaking news, the mother of missing five-year-old Taylor Williams is out of the hospital and now in the Duval County Jail. How her release from the hospital might impact the case. Brianna Williams reported her daughter missing three weeks ago. Welcome everyone to Action News Jacks at Noon. I'm Phil Amato. And I'm Don Lopez. Let's get right to team coverage on what's next for Brianna Williams while police in this mother's hometown, hundreds of miles away, work to identify remains found and if they belong to her daughter, Taylor. We begin with Action News Jacks Elizabeth Pace right now outside of JSO headquarters with our crime and safety expert, Dale Carson. Elizabeth, we could be seeing Brianna Williams for the first time in court today. Yes, we've just confirmed that they moved Williams from the hospital to the pre-trial detention center, which is where I'm at right now. I'm actually with Action News Jacks law and safety expert, Dale Carson. Dale, we were just talking about this case. To help explain what comes next. Well, she's processed now through the system. So fingerprints, photograph, DNA swab. And now the state attorney's office has to determine, based on what evidence is provided by the investigators, whether or not they're actually going to prosecute her. So there are actually two steps. You get arrested for a crime, but we have to see whether or not the state attorney's office is actually going to prosecute that crime and what they're actually going to prosecute her for. So if there's more evidence that's developed between now and that process beginning, she could ultimately be charged with murder if there's a direct connection between the child's demise and this mother. And that's what I was going to ask. According to jail records, her charges haven't changed. It's felony child neglect and giving false information to police. Do you think more serious charges will come? Well, I mean, that's entirely up to the state attorney's office based on the evidence that's developed from the continuing investigation. So we won't know the answer to that question. She's been arrested. Ultimately, she'll be charged, as I mentioned, either with what she was arrested for or more serious charges if there's more evidence developed. And an Action News Jack source was telling us this morning that when they brought her in for questioning again, she's still refusing to talk. How does that impact the case? Well, it doesn't impact it at all, of course. She has the right to remain silent. And if she talks to them, she's likely to be confessing to the crime, which removes the ability of her defense attorney and her to negotiate a better outcome, which is called, in my business, a plea deal. Action News Jack's law and safety expert Dale Carson, thank you for joining us today. We're going to continue to check jail records to see when and if she's going to be making her first appearance today. And so I'll have all the latest developments ahead at 5. Reporting live at JSO, Elizabeth Pace, CBS 47, Action News Jack's. And Action News Jax has been following this investigation for more than a month now with a lot of big developments. Action News Jack's Paige Kelton continues our team coverage with what's unfolded so far. Our sources have kept you informed of every new development. Five-year-old Taylor was reported missing on Wednesday, November 6th at 7 a.m. by her mother, Brianna Williams. Later that afternoon, we broke the news that Williams had recently moved out of a Southside apartment into the Brentwood home where she reported her daughter missing. The next day, our sources revealed Taylor hadn't been seen in weeks. Hours later, JSO confirmed the five-year-old may have been missing for weeks, even months. We also learned Brianna Williams had stopped cooperating with the investigation. Then on Monday, November 11th, Sheriff Mike Williams names Taylor's mother as a person of interest. Less than 24 hours later, our sources reveal remains were found overnight in Alabama, not far from where Brianna Williams grew up. Medical examiners this noon are still working to identify those remains. Paige Kelton, CBS 47, Fox 30, Action News Jax. Action News Jax has continuing coverage on our website and Action News Jax mobile apps. And there you can read the arrest warrant for Brianna Williams, hear from family members in Alabama, and receive breaking news alerts as more details are revealed in this investigation. Two more witnesses are on Capitol Hill today to testify in the impeachment inquiry. State Department employee David Holmes told lawmakers he overheard a cell phone conversation between Ambassador Gordon Sondland and President Trump. This came the day after President Trump asked Ukraine's president to look into the Bidens. And former NCS official Dr. Fiona Hill took issue with any suggestion it was the Ukrainians, not the Russians, who meddled in the 2016 election. Today is the last day of scheduled public hearings. They'll continue right here on CBS 47 after their break. 
Neighbors say this overturned truck is a part of a bigger problem at a local intersection that's putting their children at risk. You can see this truck straight on its side in an area they say where children play. Action News Jacks first showed you the crash at Oriole and Palmdale Streets in the Lake Forest area this morning at 8:30. Action News Jacks Beth Russo joins us there live right now this noon. Beth, families say that crashes there are constant and speeding drivers are to blame. And they want a solution. This morning, that truck landed just over here in the tree line. But come over here with me for a second so I can show you this pole, this concrete pole, is damaged. Neighbors say that this is from another crash that happened just days ago. And they have this rear view mirror with the pole's paint on it as proof. They come around this corner so fast. Jared Power's collection of car parts left in his front yard from crashes keeps growing. But right there on this corner, we've had six, seven accidents because they come flying down through here. Power says it's how this truck ended up overturned at the intersection of Oriole and Palmdale this morning. I just heard a loud noise, like a big thumping noise, like doo doom, doom, doom. A neighbor tells me he saw the truck flip end over end. He didn't want to talk on camera because he says the driver took off and is still out there. The guy got out with the hoodie and got out and ran into another like truck. My wife just pulled out 10 minutes before this happened, backed out. And if she had been backing out, they would have slammed into her. Power's real concern is for his two young sons and the other kids that play in their front yards. He says the posted signs aren't doing anything. They need speed bumps. The city's not doing anything, so if I had to rethink whether I would buy on this street, I would say <laughs> probably not. So I requested the number of crashes that have happened along this stretch of road from the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office. I also reached out to city leaders to see whether or not they have any plans to install those speed bumps along this stretch of road. All that part of the story, all new on Action News Jax at 5. Reporting live in Lake Forest this afternoon, Beth Russo, Action News Jax. A Georgia fisherman says he lived one of his worst fears after finding this man at a cove at the bottom of a lake. Inside was the body of a man who was missing for months. Jason Millen was out fishing on Lake Lanier over the weekend. When he saw something shiny right under his boat, he instantly called for help. He hopes the victim's family will now have some closure. I mean, since June 5th is, uh, is when this, this man's been missing. I can only imagine um, how hard that's been on him. Investigators identified the man as 56 year old Van Dobb. It's still not known why or how Van Dobb and his van ended up at the bottom of the lake. A medical examiner says they're trying to determine the cause of death and could have it next week. Right now, Atlantic Beach police are warning neighbors of fraud. The department says that it's received several complaints of scammers impersonating the agency. Victims say the number pops up as the police department's number. If you get a call, do not give out any personal information. Instead, if in doubt, hang up and call the number on your screen back. Schools in Union County will perform their mandatory evacuation drill today. This will cause school buses and students to be escorted off and on campus. That drill is meant to simulate an emergency like a natural disaster. The holiday shopping season is quickly approaching, and safety watchdogs don't want our kids to end up with dangerous toys. So, mom and dad, take note a dart gun, ice cream scented slime, and a plastic Power Rangers claw are just some of the toys topping the consumer safety group World Against Toys Causing Harms list of worst toys of the year. Watchdogs are also warning parents and caregivers about recalled toys that can still be bought online. Toys are getting safer, but danger still exists that can send kids to the emergency room. Last year, more than 166,000 toy-related emergency departments treated injuries, 17 deaths to children younger than 15. Our D.C. Bureau reached out to the Toy Association for a comment. They previously called this list misleading and say that all toys sold in the United States must meet rigorous safety tests and standards. In less than two hours, Jacksonville City leaders are expected to give an update on Project Save Lives. It's the city's program to end the opioid epidemic. We told you earlier this year, fewer people in Jacksonville's program are experiencing repeat overdoses. First responders say from 2017 to 2018, there was a 71% drop in overdose-related responses. That special meeting is happening at 2 this afternoon at City Hall. 
New this noon, Action News Jax has learned that the South Kitchen on Avondale has shut down. We found this Facebook post on their page saying, in part, this is with a heavy heart that we have permanently closed the doors at the South Avondale location after three years. We thank our loyal patrons and staff. A Nocatee Town Center location will remain open as it's under different ownership. Columbia County families can now help out a local high school just by eating some fries. Hmm? That's easy enough. In honor of Columbia High School Spirit Day, the McDonald's now on Highway 90 in Lake City here is helping the school raise some money. The school gets all money from any fries sold this afternoon. It goes from 4 until 6. They got fries? Yes, they do. All right. Thanks, Don. Two businesses are reopening in San Marco. The Flame Broiler is back in business and already serving customers. And the San Marco Bookstore is starting to stock up on some good reads, too. They plan to reopen on Black Friday. Let's take a live look over the ancient city where in two days the lights for the annual Nights of Lights Festival will be switched back on. Things will kick off Saturday with musical performances followed by the tree lighting at 6.30. Festivities will continue throughout the holiday season and conclude on February 2nd. I'll have your Nights of Lights forecast for this weekend. I'm First Alert Meteorologist Gary Beaton while tracking a mostly sunny day when the clouds return and some showers with a cold front. That's coming up in your Action News Jack's First Alert seven day forecast. A new emergency room is opening up in the Oak Leaf area. Coming up, we're going to show you new technology that's not only kid friendly, but it helps save lives. Plus, the U.S. Army is working to better protect their four legged team members. Coming up, the device being tested to shield them from damaging their hearing. What to watch tonight, brought to you by Ashley Home Store.
Welcome back. If you live in Oak Leaf, you'll soon have a new place to go when there's an emergency. And that's whether you're an adult or a child. Yeah, only Action News Jack's Alicia Tarancon got a sneak peek inside. She spoke with Baptist Health Administrators there on how this new ER will save lives in an area that keeps growing. This is the seventh helipad that Baptist Health has put in. Having the ability to land here will help save critical minutes when it comes to doctors saving someone's life. Darren Roark says that Baptist Health's new Oakleaf Emergency Center will serve North Clay County's growing population and West Jacksonville. We heard from Oakleaf residents uh, repeatedly that there was uh, not a readily available emergency care out in this region. The $23 million emergency facility has two areas, one for adults and one for children. There's a total of 20 beds, eight for kids and 12 for adults. Even the technology is designed to be kid friendly with a special entrance into the emergency room. And inside this room for CT scans, you'll notice cartoon characters displayed on the walls for children to look at. Toy Story themed throughout the room, um, which helps the kids yeah. to relax when they see familiar things in a world where the machine is not so familiar. On Thursday, we watch pediatric nurses, respiratory therapists, and the rest of the staff get ready for the emergency center's opening. They even have a room with pediatric radiologists that will read x rays. Roark says they opened up this ER to help bring care closer to home for a lot of people who live in the Oak Leaf area. Patients tell me every day that we're so grateful that you brought care closer to us because the traffic is getting worse in Jacksonville. It's harder to drive. And coming up at five, the one unique feature that you're only going to find at the Oak Leaf emergency room that'll help pediatric patients. Reporting in Oak Leaf, Felicia Tarancon, CBS 47, Action News Jax. Military dogs could be getting crucial new equipment to protect their hearing while out in the field. Here's a picture of a prototype known as the Canine Auditory Protection System, or CAPS for short. It was created thanks to an innovations program from the U.S. Army. Army officials say hearing laws could be enough to prevent the dog from hearing the proper commands, which can compromise a mission. Action News Jack, your official Jaguar stations, and tonight we are honoring the military. Action Sports Jack's Brent Martineau, Calais Campbell, and former Jaguar Jeff Lagerman will be at Naval Station Mayport for Jaguars All Access. I'll talk about this weekend's big, important game against the Titans live aboard the USS Paul Ignatius. Chris Connolly will be the special guest, so make sure to tune in tonight at 7 on Fox 30. Some frightening numbers to share. It has only a five year survival rate in the single digits. 7%, that's it. We're talking about pancreatic cancer, and it's one of the world's deadliest cancers. Action News Jack's First Alert Chief Meteorologist Mike Burrish explains his personal connection with this killer. It's World Pancreatic Cancer Day. We're waging hope against a disease that, as well, it's one of the most deadly cancers that exist in the world today. And my mother was a victim of the disease, passing away 12 years ago. I've posted her entire very personal journey in the Burrish blog at actionnewsjacks.com and our First Alert Weather app. And of course, Alex Trebek adding an even more uh, intense perspective on this terrible disease with his diagnosis this year. Have a great purple day. Now, certified Jacksonville's most accurate forecast, Action News Jack's first alert weather. I'm first alert meteorologist Garrett Beatonball. Right now on the satellite radar here this morning, we are showing some clouds just offshore, but all in all, it's a mostly sunny day uh, out there over northeast Florida and southeast Georgia. And we have a cold front that is to our north and west that's going to be here eventually, but not until about Saturday night. And that's when we'll be tracking a few showers, a band of showers pushing through. There's St. Augustine again. We're at 68 degrees right now, live on the first alert sky cam network there from the white room. We got 4 and 5 p.m. back into the mid 60s. Will be in the low 60s by about 7 p.m. or so, but uh, wind that is on shore around 5 to 10 miles per hour. So, nights of lights for this Saturday should be primarily dry, looking at the latest timing uh, from this morning, looking at the updated uh, data coming into us here. Uh, we'll be mainly dry through the festivities of the lighting of the ceremony there. An isolated shower possibly late in the night, but it looks to be mainly dry. It's 70 degrees right now in Jacksonville, upper 60s again in St. Augustine. We're in the mid 60s in Brunswick and up Upper 60s to near 70 there in McClinney. Five Sweet First Alert Doppler HD is dry over northeast Florida and southeast Georgia. We'll continue seeing that mostly sunny sky here this afternoon, mostly clear this evening. A few clouds closer to the coast is what we'll see tonight, but all in all, going to be mainly dry. 
We'll fast forward to Saturday because tomorrow is mostly sunny too. As we go 7, 8, 9 p.m., it'll be mainly dry across our viewing area between about 10 and midnight, southeast Georgia for Waycross down to Lake City, and then about midnight or so approaching the metro area before racing off to the south and east with this little thin band of showers likely crossing our area. So by the time you wake up likely on Sunday, uh, depending on when you get up, uh, we will be seeing the clearing sky for uh, the end of the weekend and cooling temperatures. Friday night blitz forecast will be in the 60s uh, for this Friday. So if you're playing some football here uh, or you're going out to enjoy a game, going to be fine temperature wise. McKenzie's run Saturday at TIAA Bank Field with Action News Jacks being a proud media sponsor. I'll be out there in the morning. We'll be in the 60s by about 9 a.m., 10 a.m., upper 60s, and mid 70s by lunchtime on Saturday. So here is the weekend always in view in the Action News Jacks first alert seven day forecast. We go from the upper 70s before that cold front arrives to the 60s. Again, and then cooler mornings in the 40s, but rising back through the 70s by Tuesday and into Wednesday as you get ready to travel perhaps for Thanksgiving. A few showers. That will be our next cold front after Saturdays. You can always get this forecast any time of the day right there at actionnewsjacks.com and join Chief Meteorologist Mike Burrish beginning at 5 p.m. on CBS 47 at Fox 30 Action News Jacks. All new at noon, a little hero with a big mission. Coming up, the nationwide problem this eight year old boy hopes to battle one bag at a time. Well, look at this cutie here. It'll make you smile, right? An eight year old boy in Maryland has now spent half his life helping homeless veterans. Only eight. And here he is with that big old smile. Tyler Stallings couldn't understand why these heroes didn't have a place to live. So he told his mom, We want to buy them houses, build them. And she said, Let's start small, big guy. So yeah. he created these hero bags that you see here. And in them, you'll find Thank you cards, hygiene kits, blankets, clothes. Over the last four years, Stallings has donated nearly 3,000 of these hero bags and helped raise nearly $50,000 in donations. Way to go!
We're working on much more for you ahead on CBS 47, Fox 30, Action News Jacks at 545 tonight. Action News Jacks anchors John Bachman and Tanika Hughes have a preview. It's the number one cancer attacking women millennials. And like many, a local mother never saw it coming. I go to the doctor regularly. I, you know, don't smoke. I don't drink. I exercise regularly, and I try to live a healthy lifestyle. The one thing that saved a local mother's life that could now save yours. That's today at 5:45 on CBS 47 and Fox 30. And here's your seven-day forecast once again. About 70 degrees today, mid-70s tomorrow. Some showers uh, coming in late in the night with a cold front on Saturday. But beforehand, before uh, we'll be near uh, 80 degrees. All right, wow. good-looking day today. Enjoy it, everyone. All right, and we'll see you back here tomorrow morning, starting at 4:30.